Hello ladies and gentlemen I welcome you to yet another exciting and a video filled with profound wisdom in this channel evolving consciousness Now if you are someone who is viewing this channel for the very first time is visiting this channel for the very first time this channel is all about evolving yourself into your better version Today's topic is rather very interesting and intriguing at the same time is reality that which we think it is or uh, is reality that which it is before you get lost in the jugglery of words which i just spoke let us do a practical demonstration because as you say as you know ideation without execution is delusion so unless we can understand the true magnanimity of the philosophies and from a practical standpoint we won't be able to appreciate the weight it holds right so let's do a practical exercise i want you to sit back comfortably relaxed now what i want you to do is with deep sense of meticulous attention just look around the very room in which you are sitting and i want you to carefully for about 10 to 15 seconds navigate through the entire room navigate the gaze of your eyes to the entire room and search for objects which are in color red simple let me just repeat what i just said i want you to look at wherever you are currently sitting watching this video to carefully observe objects which are of color red take your time to do that once you are done doing that now i want you to close your eyes now as you are closing your eyes i want you to mentally recollect all the objects which were of red in color now keeping your eyes closed i want you to also ask yourself or ask your brain this question in the space in which you were looking can you think of any objects which were of green in color or which were of blue in color difficult right now you may open your eyes so this practical demonstration would have illustrated to you what i mean by factual reality when i asked you to look for objects which are red in color your mind was solely focused on objects which were red and even though they were different colored objects all around you your focus was only on those red objects so your mind could not capture that this is what happens with us 24/7 and we don't even realize this because as they say we don't see what is real we only see what it is what is in this economy between our two years right this is our true economy so essentially the crux of this this particular concept of factual reality is we only see things not as they are but as we are essentially most of us are living life through this fractured sense of reality we don't actually understand what is real let me give you a practical manifestation of what fractured reality could look like in our day to day lives people who are extremely not able to speak out in public right people who are extremely shy people who are not able to communicate powerfully not even powerfully even normally right they are not able to communicate that freely now even if you are amongst a crowd of 100 people and you need to deliver that presentation or deliver that speech we become fidgety now what is actually happening right we i like to call fear right the whole word fear i like to call it as false f for false e for evidence a for appear and r for real false evidence appearing real essentially what happens is we are so consumed in the thought process of what others might think of us that we actually stop giving our best we are so consumed so petrified 
by the fear of the other's opinion that we we sort of paralyze ourselves this is happening all the time and you know what the amusing part is that everyone is also thinking the same way so essentially nobody is thinking about each other they are only thinking about themselves so everyone else is thinking what the other person is thinking about me so essentially nobody is thinking about each other but they are only thinking about themselves now this is extremely relieving and enlightening at the same time this is how fractured our beliefs our opinions our reality is because the reality which we look at which we call reality is actually looked at through the prism of our conditioning through the prism of the belief systems which we have consciously or unconsciously built over the many years of our journey in life right i am reminded of so many instances where fractured reality can really be an actual fracture then at one point of time this fractured reality can fracture your life to such an extent that you no longer can ignore it you truly become a fractured person from deep within because you have allowed false belief systems to run your life your decisions are based on those false belief systems which will eventually lead you to failure now i'm reminded of a beautiful excerpt a sort of a, a gathering a spiritual gathering which was hosted by brahma kumari sister shivani and i found that extremely pragmatic right so what sister shivani did was she asked a particularly lean girl to get up in the audience and she just passed a comment in front of everyone to her right she just said oh how fat you look how extremely fat you look everybody started laughing in that audience because everybody knew that she is not fat but she but she shivani called her fat now she was trying to prove a very subtle but an extremely deep point what she was trying to establish what she was trying to portray was that if you know deep within that what the other person is talking about you has nothing to do with reality but it is only to do with his own false dogmas with his own fractured belief systems those things won't hurt you anymore because you know deep within what you are now this can be so revealing right and so enlightening at the same time that once you have this deep conviction right and if you closely observe the reason of the source of hurt right you only get hurt at people's words when you somewhere down the corner you feel they are correct if you feel they are not correct there is no reason for my friend for you to be hurt somewhere down the line you think that the other person is right that's the reason you are feeling hurt right so next time when anyone tries to abuse you or tries to insult you smile at them because you know deep within you are not that <clears throat> and people who try to hurt others people who are extremely critical remember one quote which says only hurt people hurt others right so people who are extremely motivated people who have accomplished things in life who have a great self esteem they are incapable of hurting others i'm remember of an instance in the life of gautama the buddha so it so happened that a person who was extremely envious of gautam the gautama the buddha and he came to buddha and he said you are such a freak you are not at all a competent teacher i completely disregard you and some of the stories go even to the extent to say that that person even spit on the face of buddha if it was you and me we would be extremely infuriated we would be extremely angry extremely we would want vengeance at the second moment right we would want to avenge what just happened with us 
But Buddha was a makabha. He did not react. He had a smile on his face. And days later, the same person became an ardent devotee of Buddha. That is the power of a person who is truly grounded within himself, who truly knows himself. Because if you truly know yourself, you are a person who truly respects yourself. And a person who truly respects himself is not a beggar. He is not, he doesn't want the respect of others. Because a person who respects himself doesn't, you know, depend on the respect, on the appreciation of others. He knows what he is, he knows his metal. Also, I am reminded of a beautiful story from the Mahabharata. Now, you know how reality can be misconstrued? There is this beautiful instance where both Duryodhana and Arjuna approached Lord Shri Krishna when they were about to start the battle of the Mahabharata. So, it so happened that both of them went for uh, taking help from Lord Krishna and Krishna was you know, having, having a good sleep that day and he was about to wake up when Duryodhana was standing just aside him, close to his head, while Arjuna was standing near his feet. So when Krishna opens his eyes, the very first person who Krishna sees is Arjuna, right? And since he saw Arjuna the very first time, he says Arjun to ask him what he wants. And Duryodhan is completely petrified. Reason being, since he wanted the magnanimous army of which Krishna was the ruler of, right? And he was the anticipating that Arjun might probably ask the Narayan Sena, which Krishna was the king of. But Duryodhan was a poor chap. He was living in this fractured understanding of life. He thought the more the people he has, the more the chances of him winning the war is. He was living in his own fractured belief systems, fractured understanding of reality. But you know what? Arjuna didn't ask the Narayan Sena. He only asked Lord Krishna's company. And Krishna had very well told that if I join either of you, I will not participate officially in the battle. I will just be a part of the battle, but I won't participate in terms of actively pursuing, pursuing battle. I won't use any weapons in the battleground. Despite that, Arjun chose Krishna and the rest is history. You all know what happened ultimately, right? So why did I bring up this example? Now most of us might have a very limited and a misconstrued understanding that the quantity matters. The more number of people you know, the more number of people you connect with, the better you are. But my friends, if you look at Mahabharata, if you study Mahabharata, the Pandavas didn't have a lot of people. The greatest of warriors were in the opposite army of Duryodhana. But Pandava did have one person and that one person is equivalent to millions of galaxies. And that person was Lord himself. So this is how misconstrued reality can get unless you have an absolutely unbiased thought process. If you know that your very essence, you at the very core of your spiritual self, you know how to see reality as it is and not through the conditioning of society, not through the false belief systems which the society has unconditionally tat brain tattooed into your consciousness. The example which I gave of Mahabharata is a phenomenal example which illustrates the power of quality over quantity. You might know thousands of people, you might have thousands of, you know, people who you claim to be your acquaintances, but are they quality people? Even if you don't have any person in your life, right? Remember one thing. When you feel the loneliest, just remember whom you belong to. You belong to the God Himself. 
in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, it's beautifully said that when you realize that you are part and parcel of the Almighty, of the Divinity, loneliness cannot touch you. You will never feel frustrated. You will never lament at anything. Because you know what happened in Mahabharata, right? Not many people were there with the Pandavas, but the Lord was there with them. So ultimately they prospered. Ultimately they won the battle. So quality matters for quantity. Now this principle, this particular aspect can be applied in any dimension of your life. And you will see how powerful this concept is. And this idea behind explaining this concept of fractured reality is, it is so important to, you know, constantly question the consciousness through which we view this world. Because our identities, our belief systems form a major basis of all the biases which we have. Oh, this person is like that. Oh, that person is like that. This kind of a superficial level of judgment, right, which we sort of form. And we have this conditioning in our systems that if I do this, if I have this big group of people, I am going to be happy. This is all a misconstrued sense of reality. I hope this message really resonated with you and I hope you will question your negative beliefs. I hope you will question beliefs that hinder you from operating at your full potential. Now one interesting aspect, right? one actionable item which I would like to share here is the fastest way to change your beliefs is to change your actions. Let's say for example, you are not such a confident public speaker. Start enrolling in places like the Toastmasters Club, where you can constantly hone your public speaking skills. Toastmasters Club, in case you aren't aware, it's a club of phenomenal significance. It's across the world. It was uh, originally created by Ralph Smedley. Uh, and the whole idea behind the club is to give folks opportunities to develop their public speaking skills, right? Through a completely, perfectly organized curriculum, wherein they tackle each and every skill of what a public speaker must cultivate within himself. So this is one example which I just said of public speaking. There can be innumerable examples wherein you have these belief systems that I cannot. When you completely try to, you know, make progress and question your beliefs and remember every time you stop yourself from doing what you fear, you are fueling your fear. And the next time it's only going to get more difficult for you. Remember the acronym definition which I gave in the beginning of the video. Fear is nothing but false evidence appearing real. So next time and the lights go out and you feel uh, someone is there behind you, turn back and see that person in the eye. Because when you see the fear in the eye, fear disappears. Swami Vekananda put it beautifully, fear no one, death is a change of costume. If you think about it, right, death is the ultimate fear. Now you might say that, I don't fear death, I probably fear a loss of job or a loss of relationship. But go deep within what you are actually fearing. Every fear is essentially rooted to your identity and whichever, whichever aspect of your life, whichever circumstance in your life threatens that identity, threatens that sense of security, there is where fear is developed. And now when that identity is itself threatened, right? So what is death? The complete destruction of your identity. So essentially that is the source of all fears. Now we are not yogis, right? We cannot completely eradicate the fear of death. But at least we can intellectualize and understand that all fears are essentially rooted at the fear of death. And Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says that we are not mortals. We are immortals having a mortal experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. So this entire thought process of fear is actually an illusion. Fear itself is an illusion. If you deeply contemplate, if you deeply observe, fear is a complete illusion. Because who will you humiliate? Who will you hurt? 
because you are not that identity, right? As per Krishna, you are the soul who cannot be cut, who cannot be humiliated, who cannot be burned, who cannot be moistened. Then who, who then why are we lamenting about things which we are losing, right? Things, why are we scared about the things? Essentially, what I am trying to address here is the very things which stop us from expressing our full potential, the foundation on which these things are based on, the fear, the fear which is based on, right? The foundation on which this fear is based on is itself faulty, it is, is in itself an illusion. So let us realize this and understand and let's try to curate a reality which serves us. Let's try to install and develop belief systems which serve us. Because as they say, 90% of our life is how we react to situations and only 10% of our life is what happens to us. With that thought, I would like to leave you people with this phenomenal quote which I read from Marcel Prost. He says, the real voyage of discovery consists of not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. The real voyage of discovery consists of not in seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. I let that proverb sink into your system. Hope that message really resonated with you. Hope the message of fractured reality resonated with you. I had written a particular article in my LinkedIn page a couple of years back on this concept of fractured reality, wherein I had also shared a personal story of my own family there. And I experienced this phenomenon of how reality can be fractured and how detrimental it can be for one's own life. Right. I will share the link of that particular article in the description box. Hope you folks enjoyed this video. Hope you derived value out of this video. And if you really love this video, I'm, I will really appreciate if you like the video, share and subscribe the channel. Also, please put your valuable feedback in the comment section so that I can improve my content, so that I can improve my delivery. Thank you so much and meet you in the next video.